Asset group listing group filters represent segments of products in your merchant center feed as defined by a listing dimension such as a product brand. And you indicate the dimension such as a specific brand name using the case value field. When you combine these asset group listing group filters, they start to look like a tree. This example would include all products in the asset group that have a condition of new and a brand name of either Puzzle Co. or Games Inc. Each asset group listing group filter has a type which defines whether you should include or exclude products that meet the filtering criteria. Alternatively, using a type of subdivision indicates the asset group listing group filter should be segmented by another filtering dimension. You link nodes together to form a tree structure in the child nodes using the parent listing group filter field. And you use the asset group field to indicate which asset group, the asset group listing group filter, and entire part product partition tree is associated with. All of the asset group listing group filters in a tree need to reference the same asset group. These trees have a few requirements worth noting. First, all nodes in the same row of a tree must use the same filtering dimension to filter products. We have one row here for product condition and another for product brand. Second, each row in the tree must contain a single asset group listing group filter with an empty case value for its listing dimension. This represents all other products not captured by the other asset group listing group filters in the same row of the tree. Finally, each tree has a maximum seven rows and each asset group can have a maximum 1,000 asset group listing group filters. If you create an asset group listing group filter that is a unit included node with no children and no listing dimension on which to segment products, this represents all products in your feed and this is a valid product partition tree all on its own. As a reminder, the operations that create all of the asset group listing group filters in a tree and the one that creates the asset group must all be in the same request, which means you'll need to use temporary IDs and resource names and order the operations such that you never reference an object before it's created. This includes all of the asset group and parent listing group filter references. What's interesting about asset group listing group filters as compared with other product partition trees in the Google Ads API is that with other use cases, you may set a non-binary value on a tree node. For example, you can use unique bids in different nodes of the tree. However, Performance Max automates bidding and it does so using Google AI. So all you have to specify is whether the leaf nodes are unit included or unit excluded. To me, this simplifies the construction of these trees. I like the approach of saying, I want to include all of these products or I want to exclude all products or include all products except for these. For example, include all new products of the Foo brand sold online. To me, taking this approach simplifies the construction of the tree. For one, you should try to find the simplest version of the tree that accomplishes your objective. And using this exercise can help reach that end. In addition, you can also just define these parameters for your tree and write code that automatically creates the tree based on your inputs.